Okay, we're gonna talk about action potentials for SA nodal cells and answer the questions, what ion channels are used for SA nodal action potentials and what does the graph for the action potential look like? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. SA nodal cells spontaneously fire action potentials that propagate throughout the heart and then trigger contractions. Now, how does this look? Let's take a look. Here's a voltmeter with a microelectrode and a reference electrode, and this one measures the voltage difference between the inside and outside of a cell. So here's some SA nodal cells, and we put the microelectrode inside. Watch what happens. The voltmeter just moves from negative 60 to negative 40, and then bam, shoots to positive 20 millivolts. Why does this happen? It keeps cycling through this. Well, action potentials are produced by ionic currents flowing through ion channels. Here are the ions, sodium and calcium on the outside, potassium on the inside, and there are the channels, the doors they go through. So if we take a look at the ions and the channels, that'll help us understand the changes in the voltmeter for the action potentials. Let's learn more about these ion channels. The first one is the IF, or funny sodium current, and it's a funny sodium channel. Uh, not funny like haha, -ha, but funny because it's so unique and it's one of the only places we find it. It's also called a hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated HCN channel. Let's go with funny sodium channel. It's voltage gated. And what makes it funny or unique is it's activated by a repolarizing event, not a, not a depolarizing event. It enables a sodium influx that slowly depolarizes the membrane. It then closes uh, uh, during the calcium depolarizing event, somewhere around you know negative 40 millivolts, and it activates or reopens on the hyperpolarizing or repolarizing event. I need to note this. This is not the INA, that sodium current, from voltage-gated sodium channels that we see in cardiomyocytes and neurons. Uh, the only location for the funny sodium channels is the SA and AV nodal cells. The ICA, the calcium current, uh, occurs through the L-type calcium channels. They're voltage gated, they open at negative 40 millivolts, and they allow an influx of calcium that depolarizes the membrane. This is what generates the upstroke in the SA nodal cells, and then it closes at positive 20 millivolts. The IK, the potassium current, uh, occurs through the potassium channels. This is also voltage gated. It opens at positive 20 millivolts and it allows an efflux of potassium that repolarizes the membrane. It then closes at negative 60 millivolts. A couple of things to note. There are no IK1 channels, the ones we see in all the other cells and especially the contractile heart muscle cells that establish resting membrane potential. And there's no INA, voltage gated sodium channels in the SA nodal cells, okay? Now, Let's say that the, the SA nodal cells, we're gonna start, because it continually changes, we're just gonna start at negative 60 millivolts. When that occurs, the funny sodium channels are open. Now, what this allows is an influx of sodium. Now, watch what happens to that membrane potential as sodium slowly trickles in. Once we hit that negative 40 millivolts, and we hit that, the funny sodium channels close and the cal L-type calcium channels open, which allows the influx of calcium, and that's when we get the depolarizing event all the way to positive 20 millivolts. When this occurs, the L-type calcium channels close and the potassium channels open, allowing an efflux of potassium down their concentration gradient until we repolarize the membrane back to negative 60 millivolts, at which time the potassium channels close. And throughout this, the sodium potassium pump is restoring sodium and potassium concentration inside and outside the cell by using primary active transport, ATP, to pump sodium, three sodium against its gradient out to potassium in. Once we hyperpolarize or repolarize back to negative 60 millivolts, the funny sodium channels open and we begin again. So we're gonna do all that again except with a graph. We're gonna start again at that negative 60 millivolts. Now phase four deals with the funny, the IF, the funny sodium current. Okay, so the funny sodium channels are open. This allows an influx of sodium that slowly brings a membrane to threshold, which is negative 40 millivolts. This slope determines the heart rate. 
Sympathetic innervation will increase the slope. Parasympathetic innervation will decrease the slope. This is the pacemaker potential, what it's often called. This is what accounts for the automaticity. This is why the as soon as we go through the action potential and the funny sodium channels open, slowly we keep going until this pacemaker potential until we hit negative 40 millivolts, at which time the L-type calcium channels open. This is phase zero. The L-type channels, L-type calcium channels open. The calcium influx depolarizes the membrane and the funny sodium channels close. This is the upstroke. This is depolarization. This is unique. It's a lot of this is. This is unique because in contractile heart muscle cells and neurons, the depolarizing event is a sodium event through voltage-gated sodium channels, not a calcium event through L-type calcium channels. That's what makes SA and AV nodal cells unique. Phase three occurs because at positive 20-ish millivolts, that's phase three, the potassium channels open, allowing an efflux of potassium that's going to repolarize the membrane, but then the L-type calcium channels close. This is the downstroke until finally we reach to phase four, which is the hyperpolarization of the membrane then reopens the funny sodium channels and we start getting this trickle of sodium and we get that um, pacemaker potential again. A couple of things. The three conventional phases of pacemaker cell action potential are phase four, the funny sodium current, phase zero, which is really the depolarizing event through all type calcium channels, phase three, which is the repolarizing event, and then back to phase four. Note, there's really no phase one or phase two in SA nodal action potentials, but there are in contractile heart muscle cell action potentials. More on that in another video. In the SA node, there's no time period when the potential remains constant between action potentials. It's continually in, like basically, it's always in a depolarization event or it's continually in a repolarization event. It's never constant. An SA nodal firing is normally determined by three things, intrinsic firing rate, sympathetic input, and vagal input. Intrinsic firing rate is basically how long it takes to uh, depolarize and then repolarize. Usually it's 60 to 100 beats per minute is the firing rate. That's the sinus rhythm. The second is the sympathetic input. This is through uh, circulating uh, epinephrine catecholamines or norepinephrine secreted by sympathetic nerves that increases the funny sodium current or increases the calcium current, that increases the rate of the diastolic depolarization. Notice it's increased the slope of the funny sodium and calcium current. That increases heart rate. That is, that is a positive chronotropic agent. In contrast, vagal input by releasing acetylcholine binding to these cholinergic receptors, M2 cholinergic receptors, acetylcholine will decrease the funny sodium current and calcium current, which decreases the rate of diastolic depolarization, which decreases heart rate. It's a negative chronotropic agent. And that, my friends, is the action potential of SA nodal cells in a nutshell.